What I want to get into in this video is kind of the more practical side of uh, torque and rotation, um, where it really intersects with a lot of everyday life stuff. And that is kind of answering the question of what determines whether something is stable or whether it's going to like tip over, for instance, when it comes to gravity. Um, so like, let's take a really simple um, demonstration here. I have this very basic tower, long skinny tower. Um, we know intuitively a long skinny tower like this is not gonna be terribly stable. Um, so, you know, in fact, if I just give it a little push, it'll fall over. Um, but if I give it an even smaller push than that, it will actually come back to the stable situation. But if I push it past a certain point, so even there it will go back, then it will tip over. So what is that tipping point, that literal tipping point where if I cross over that point, um, the, the object is gonna tip over? Let's see if, if we can figure out what that is um, using the, the ideas of torque. So um, let me start out by drawing the object here. As always, we wanna start with free body diagram. So there's my object sitting on the ground down here. There's my tower. Um, so under normal conditions, if the tower is just sitting there and I'm not tipping it, the free body diagram is going to look like the gravitational force is gonna be acting on the object's center, as we've learned previously. So there's the gravitational force. And you know intuitively the gravitational force is going to be the force that causes this thing to tip over, right? So it's the gravitational torque that we're really interested in here. So let's, um, let's think about the force that the table is gonna be exerting on the tower. Um, when the object is on like kind of an extended flat surface like this, the reality is that the normal force the table exerts on the tower is basically going to be all across, is gonna be spread all across this surface with you could imagine a bunch of little tiny force vectors spread all over the surface. Let me see if I can draw that a bit better. Tough to draw tiny little arrows. Um, imagine a whole bunch of tiny little normal force vectors spread across the surface, which normally we just represent with one big vector because for most of the stuff we've done previously in the course, it really doesn't matter that these um, vectors are spread out. We can just sort of group them all together and represent them with one force. But now it's gonna be important where those forces are acting on the object. So let's now think about um, if I wanna calculate whether this object is gonna be rotationally stable, I need an axis of rotation. So like, I'm gonna put the axis of rotation, uh, well, let's start out by putting it down here. Oops. Switch tools here. Let's start out by putting it down here, just below the gravitational force, because this will be the easiest to understand. So that's supposed to be straight below the gravitational force. Um, in this case, the gravitational force exerts no torque because Ft equals zero. The um, force has no tangential component because it points directly to the axis of rotation. And then um, meanwhile, for the normal force, um, the net force, the net torque from the normal force is going to be zero because there's just as many forces that would tend to rotate it counterclockwise on this side versus the number of forces that would tend to rotate it clockwise on this side. So those will all balance out um, and um, the situation will be stable and the object will not undergo any rotation. But what happens when we start to tip the object over? Okay, that's where things start to get more interesting. So let's say, let's do one where the system is tipped over a little bit. Um, and see what happens. Okay, so there's my tower now. The gravitational force is going to act on the object's center of mass. Um, let's say that 
the object center of mass is here. Okay, so there's the gravitational force. Now, since the object is now sitting just on its corner, the normal force becomes a lot simpler. The normal force um, is just going to act here because that's the point where um, all of the weight is now concentrated because it's leaning on its corner. So in other words, what I'm diagramming here is the situation where um, it's balancing on its corner like this. This part's not in contact with the table anymore. Just the corner is in contact with the table and then it might tip over or it might go back um, to the stable situation. Okay, so for this drawing of what I showed here, will it tip over? The way that you would figure that out is, first of all, I want my axis of rotation to be here at the corner because that's the point that it's rotating around in this case. So the normal force is going to exert no torque because it has L equals zero. The normal force is acting at the axis of rotation. And what about the gravitational force? Um, I'm not sure if you can see it right away, but if I try to analyze this the way that I normally do, visualize a circle centered here, centered on the axis of rotation, and then I draw a line connecting the axis of rotation to this point and another line tangent to the circle at that point, so like this. What you can hopefully see there is that the gravitational force does have two components. It has a small tangential component this way, and then it has a large radial component that way. That would be the right triangle I would use to break it into its components. The important thing being that the tangential component of the gravitational force is pointing this way, which means that the torque is going to be clockwise in this case. So the torque exerted by the gravitational force is going to be positive, and the object is going to tip over because the gravitational force is exerting a clockwise torque, and that clockwise torque is going to cause the tower to further tip over. So that is the torque that's responsible for something tipping over, first of all. Now, what about a case where we don't push it quite as far and the object doesn't tip over? Why doesn't the object tip over if I only pushed it a little bit? So let's do another picture here where we draw one where the object is just a little bit tipped like this. So say my tower's like this, just barely tipped a little bit. Um, now the gravitational force on the center is maybe here. The normal force is here. And what you may notice here, let me draw it in case you can't see it. Once again, I wanna put my axis of rotation on the normal force. And once again, let me draw my line connecting to where the gravitational force is and the line tangent to that. What you can see this time is that now the tangential component of the gravitational force points in that direction. So that's what has changed between these two pictures. This time, the tangential component of the gravitational force goes that way. So that's going to cause a counterclockwise rotation. Oops, this one should, of course, be less than zero because clockwise is less than zero. This one's greater than zero. Um, so this one's going to have a counterclockwise rotation, a counterclockwise torque. And so that one is going to fall back to the stable position. And now you notice, what is the qualitative difference between these two pictures of why one tips over and one doesn't? And the answer is, is the gravitational force to the right or to the left of the, of the point where 
it's in contact. If you drew a vertical line here through, you know, along the direction of the normal force through the axis of rotation, the key point is that here, um, the gravitational force is to the right of that point, and over here, the gravitational force is to the left of that point. So what you want to visualize when you think about whether something would tip over is, where's the point that it's balanced on? And then is the gravitational force to the right of that point or to the left of that point? Is the object's center of mass to the right of that point or to the left of that point? Because the object is going to tip in whichever the direction the center of mass is. So for instance, with the human body, if someone starts leaning their body to one side, you can picture their center of mass moving as they lean their body. And like if the center of mass is over the person's foot, they'll be stable. And if the center of mass goes outside of the person's foot, then there's going to start to be a gravitational torque, which could cause them to tip over. Um, and uh, this explains a lot of stuff in, first of all, in, in architecture and also in sports in terms of like the, the architecture part is probably obvious in terms of like why buildings are big at the bottom and skinny at the top, because we have to make sure that the center of mass of the object kind of stays close to the center of the object. Um, and in sports um, with foot, place, foot placement, for instance, um, we have to be careful about making sure that the person's center of mass stays over their feet. Um, I'll explain this a different way in the next video and, and show you some kind of more real life examples. But this is the way we can explain this concept using um, the, the idea of torque and sort of the tools that we've developed so far.